Hi, I'm Steve Bartabaugh, and welcome to Meet the Mayor. I'm here with the Honorable Elizabeth Tisdell. Liz, welcome to the set, and we have not had a chance to talk in a few months, um, but that's because things have been very busy at the city of Evanston. One of it starts with the budget and has continued to be an issue just because it was such a large deficit for the city to work with this year. Um, give me some of your reflections on the budget process, how it turned out, and sort of where we are now a month into the new budget year. I think the budget process was a very good process. The city manager and the council set it up and involved the community as much as possible. But the budget process, as you know, was also a disastrous process yeah. because we didn't have enough revenue coming in. So we cut nine and a half million dollars from the budget. Um, then Governor Quinn, who had said he would not cut what cities get from the income tax, uh, cities get 10 percent and yeah. he cut it to 7 percent so that means another million seven hundred thousand that if that goes through will have to be cut from the city budget so while I think our process was yeah. good and we involved the public and we were very transparent uh, it was still horrific yeah and lots so what's of the process if the uh, as you said if the Quinn issue happens where again there's no more cuts to be made uh, obviously they're happening within the budget year that's already active. Uh, how do you go about doing that? Uh, we'll have to reopen the budget and we had set three hundred thousand dollars aside because I had said that while the state <laughs> wasn't going to cut the income tax they would clearly cut something from us. Yeah. So we at least at least there's something at least there. we have yeah. yeah. three hundred thousand which looks like a paltry amount but <laughs> I thought it was incredibly uh, good that the council managed and difficult to do. In very difficult yeah. times to put that much more into reserves. So the answer is I've never been the mayor before and never been the mayor before when a governor did that. <laughs> so I don't know what the process is. Yeah. We cut more yeah. in as transparent a manner as possible, but it's going to be very painful. I am hopeful that it won't happen and my response is to lobby that it not happen. Mm -hmm. Well, and we're also seeing the fallout not being just the city of Evanston. We're seeing it other municipalities. And within the city, we just saw that the uh, District 65 has had a number of cuts and layoffs to make. Um, is it surprising? And, and I guess more importantly, is, is there any way to crystal ball um, a possibility of change going down the road? Well, obviously, if the income tax passes, if they ever propose an income tax <laughs> and then um, call it to a vote, if it passes, then hopefully the cuts in teachers and the cuts to cities uh, would not happen. But yeah. I have no crystal ball as to whether or not an income tax will pass. I do support it. Yeah. But getting it through the legislature and even getting it to a vote in the legislature is a murky process. As yeah. you could tell from the pension bill passing in 20 hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was kind of painful. Yeah, don't ask me to crystal ball that place. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of uh, where all the action happens, Springfield, D.C., um, tell me a little bit about your agenda. Is there, are there future trips planned? Well, there will be a lobby day in Springfield in April for, it's an Evanston lobby day, and if I could remember which day of the, <laughs> of the month it was, I would tell you. But District 65, 202, and uh, City Council and Northwestern University are all going together. And uh, Senator Schoenberg was telling me what day uh, President Shapiro was coming to mm -hmm. Springfield. And I said, oh, yeah, that's Evanston Lobby Day. He's coming with us. And <laughs> the idea that Northwestern and the city would come to Springfield together is is a surprise and a very pleasant one. And very welcomed, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah that's exciting. And, and, you know, again, speaking of projects working with the university, um, Google Day was a big deal. And obviously the push for getting Google to come to Evanston and bring high-speed Internet uh, has a lot of people excited. Um, Actually, it was interesting. I actually saw the day that the, uh, the announcement was made, and I sent an email to one of our board members, and they said, Liz is already on it. She already that. I said, so I was very impressed. As, as it was released, you had gotten the word out to the rest of the folks, I guess, over at the Civic Center. Um, tell me a little how the process began that Evanston said we should do this. The process began because the community emailed me and said, Liz, we have to do this. And <laughs> people who know far more about technology than I do uh, were all and people who I trust and admire were all telling me, Liz, we need to do this, and they made a compelling case. Yeah. So I emailed the city manager and said, 
help, I'm getting all these emails and I think they're right, we need to try this. And he was getting emails himself and we agreed that the community was right. But it was a community driven, it wasn't a Liz Tisdall yeah. driven, it was a community driven uh, effort. And do you think that the community had made a, has made a large enough statement and, and I guess the, the difficult thing is no one knows for certain what it is that Google really wants in regards to who they're going to pick. And that's why there are numerous amounts of towns who are involved in this process right now. But um, I guess the, the thought was, was there sort of a strategy session as to how to uh, approach this? Well, the strategy was to spend no money, but get <laughs> but get Google to come to Evanston <laughs> in spite I, of Yeah, that. I heard the budget was kept under around 2,000 or so. The budget was very <laughs> small. And um, I, I was impressed that the community came together. Northwestern had a video and it was very technological. I'm sure it was brilliant because I didn't understand most of it, so I know it was excellent. Yeah, from a TV standpoint, of course, we enjoyed it. It was kind of interesting because each one of the groups that was doing a presentation, all of them were basically finished with a video that kind of told the, told the story in a very concise way, all under five minutes. And you had, the, you had the university, you had the high school, you had School District 65, and you had the businesses, so you really had touched on just about every aspect in the community. I thought that the hospital, uh, mm -hmm. Evanston Hospital and Northwestern and the high school and District 65 all did a wonderful job and mm -hmm. one of my favorite parts of the whole press conference was when Superintendent Murphy got up to speak and he had the shoot screaming eagles all standing <laughs> behind him and I thought that was a terrific example of why Evanston needs Google. Yeah, yeah, I think it was very effective. Um, more changes that was still happening in the community, um, public works being reorganized. Uh, how's that going to affect folks in the community? Well, one of the exciting things at public works is that uh, Suzette, she's changed her name from Eggleston to Robinson. <laughs> I'm going to try to get the new name right. That would have thrown me. <laughs> but she is, has been appointed the new director of public works. She is no longer the interim director of public works. Mm -hmm. And Suzette does a marvelous job, so I think that uh, speaks well for the department. And Wally's reorganization makes sense. The water department is going to be needing a serious rehab, and so we're going to have to focus a lot of attention on just the water department. So I, I think it's going to work well. Yeah. Now, you know, we, we kind of alluded back from the budget period, but during those meetings, um, at times it got very heated and uh, a lot of new aldermen this year. Um, how, was your, how did you feel the interaction was between folks who had opposing viewpoints on the council? I think the council handled it all very well. Everybody had one goal, and that was to come up with the best budget they could for the city of Evanston. Mm -hmm. And while they had divergent views, and <laughs> there were a lot of meetings, so tempers did flare yeah. occasionally, but... Um, you always get nervous when they go to legal for rules on how committees work and votes, and then you get, okay, now we're getting serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but I thought they handled it very well, and I thought it was a transparent process and involved the public, and, yeah. and we had to make a lot of cuts, and we will have made some mistakes in making nine and a half million dollars worth of cuts, and when we find out that something really isn't working that we thought would, mm -hmm. we'll change it. Well, one of the areas that there's some change coming up is in the, uh, the trash pickup. Um, will folks, I, I guess the question is, how is the community going to be aware of this and uh, is the change going to be drastic to what people are used to? Well, the community is certainly aware of it because I've gotten phone calls already. You're raising fees and <laughs> you're increasing my taxes. And yes, we are going to charge more for trash pickup unless you revert to the smaller garbage can, mm -hmm. which people could yeah. if you recycle more. Now that we have the bigger recycling uh, cans, you could actually go to a smaller garbage can. Mm -hmm. And if people do, the charges will be less. So, uh, But the idea that we could cut nine and a half million from the budget <laughs> and <laughs> encourage people to recycle more and not raise any fee anywhere. We just had to raise some, right? you know, it yeah. just doesn't work that way. Yeah. I wish it did. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I think, again, sometimes people just want to know the specifics as long as they realize, again, I know they're doing stickers now with, you know, certain bundles that have to be wrapped. Mm -hmm. After a while, I had to take a pass on it because I was like, I'm confused. I have to take a breather. <laughs> but, but I think well, I've finally gotten down the, the, the process. You can pay for a sticker for yard yeah. waste 
and put it on a bag, or you can buy a yard waste bin, which is actually, I'm encouraging people to do that because it's much better for the men who pick the stuff up because then the truck picks it up and yeah. people don't throw their backs out, you know, yeah. throwing things into trucks. So yeah. I hope people will buy the container instead. But All right, going a totally different direction. Some very exciting and, and uh, fun things happening at Robert Crown when Shawnee Davis came back to town, uh, our Olympic hero, if you will, a uh, gold and silver medal this year. And um, he came back and has always had an allegiance to Robert Crown. He's always had an allegiance to Robert Crown, and Robert Crown has always had an allegiance to Shawnee Davis. He is he's like the Pied Piper. You know, <laughs> whenever he comes back after winning Olympic gold, what he really likes is the kids, and yeah. they follow him in a little circle around him. You can always tell where Shawnee is because there's this little group of children following his every move and he's generally got a couple of them that he picks up and shows his medal to and he, he's just a great, great guy. Yeah. And while he didn't live in Evanston, he moved, his mother moved to Rogers Park to be near Robert Crown mm -hmm. because it was such a welcoming rink and because we had such a great speed skating coach. Yeah. And at the event, there were guys who were the first guy to ever teach Shawnee how to sharpen skates. And <laughs> Shawnee hadn't even known. You know, he was a little kid. He sure, didn't know he needed know. to. Yeah. So um, it was, it was nice. a wonderful reunion. Now, for the, the actual Crown Center itself, uh, is, it needs some help. The um, question is, does Shawnee have to melt down the gold medal, or are there <laughs> other options? <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful gold medal. That, that <laughs> is, it was fun to be that close to one. But... Uh, Shawnee has promised to help. He's very interested in rebuilding Crown. And as a matter of fact, my welcome remarks or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. I said that the council was committed to having a, a, a superb Robert Crown facility. And Shawnee didn't think I made a hard enough hitting <laughs> speech <laughs> in favor of Crown. So um, that sounds like he's very committed. Then. He's very committed, and Good. we are. We've sent out requests for a proposal for a public-private partnership. Mm -hmm. We would own the land, and someone would build, you know, the rinks, and we'll see what the response is. Yeah, that would be great. That'd be great. Now, one of the other things that's happened uh, since last time we talked is you had a, a state of the city address to give. Uh, tell me how that was. Did you enjoy doing it? It was it difficult? Uh, yes, it's extremely difficult yeah. to. Uh, wrap up everything that happened in the city and and to make all the departments you know feel that their work has been recognized yeah. when there isn't my original speech was I don't know 25 30 minutes because <laughs> it recognized everything every department had done and I mm -hmm. called the city manager and said help <laughs> and he came and just drew lines through things. And <laughs> I said, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I can't say all this. So. Well, yeah, I, I, will, I will also admit that he was the script writer for the Evanston video that we produced. So there's uh, some hidden talents we didn't know about. Yeah, yeah. When you want to cut a speech, <laughs> I advise calling Wally. <laughs> um, this summer upcoming, well, I guess really we have to make it through the spring. We're finally getting a change of seasons here in town. It seems like it's been forever. And, of course, the concern is always, you know, we move from the two seasons, winter and then street repair. So are we in that street repair part of the season, and will it be a, a long spring for folks in regards to um, fixing the roads here in town? It will be a long spring for folks in terms of fixing the roads. That's another reason that we need Google. If we had Google, the city would be able to send out information so you would know exactly when the street repair was starting and when it would be finished, yeah. and people would be much happier. So it's, oh, it's yeah. going to happen the way it always does, and people are going to be upset. Like they always are. Yep. <laughs> Certain things are constant. And like, with as we cause. Said, taxes. With cause. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and again, it, it, as we know, if you've ever driven into a pothole and had to get your car repaired, you understand why that there has I, to be fixes made. I certainly understand yeah. why we have to have fixes, and I certainly understand why people are upset about it. Yeah. Going into the better weather months, uh, any uh, uh, summer events or things that, uh, that you're looking forward to? Oh, I always look forward to summer in Evanston. It's a fabulous time. The 4th of July is a, a great event, and we have all the festivals. Yeah. You know, the Ethnic Arts Festival is a particular favorite of mine, but uh, yeah. there are advocates for every single one of them. And the good news is that they've all survived so far, even with the economy, so I, I guess that's, that's a big plus. We're, we're working on it, yeah. yeah. 
yeah. I think they do draw people to Evanston, and, and they are a plus, certainly, for our economy. Yeah. And speaking of, of increases, we see the tuition at Northwestern is going up a little bit, so I still can't go there. I, <laughs> my parents <laughs> are still going to be upset that I haven't quite made it there yet. But <laughs> uh, As you were talking about with that relationship seemingly coming together in the sense that there's more uh, working together, more joint projects, uh, are there any other things on the agenda for you in regards to working with the university? Well, there are always more things. Uh, the yeah. university did support us, and I, and as did Evanston Hospital when we applied for the NSP2 money for affordable housing and, and yeah. got that money. So it, it, they've been there for us whenever we've asked. And they also invited us to a, they invited the whole city council to a basketball game that they, they won, <laughs> which was <laughs> nice. But, but I, I think there are always tensions with that relationship as well. Yeah. And there will always be tensions yeah. with a community trying to live next to college students and also next to a large institution. Yeah. So there are conflicts and, and they will continue and we will work hard to resolve them as they come up. Yeah. Again, if it was an issue by issue basis, I think it might be a little bit easier. Like you said, I think the, the bigger hump is just trying to have that cohesion of having the ability to sit down and talk about things, and that's huge. And that, and that so far has been the case since the new regime. It has, and, and it hasn't. You know, it's a large institution, yeah. and uh, so obviously President Shapiro doesn't know that there is an issue over peddlers, which we resolved, or that <laughs> um, I, I doubt that he knows that there's a... Well, I, I'm sure he knows there's a Northwestern University City Committee, yeah. that, but whether he knows the genesis of that and the lawsuit and that Judge Mikva felt very strongly about setting that up, right. uh, I don't know. And I think we need to make much better use of that committee. And so I'm hoping well, we're hoping we get the president happen. in too. We've had a couple invites in for an interview, and, and unfortunately, it's taken months. So we're hoping, like <laughs> anything else, same sort of thing, open up the communication lines, and that always tends to get at least people uh, communicating and, and having conversations, which is always a good thing. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. You'll like him. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, interesting story came out recently about the, uh, uh, the livability that um, Evanston is still somewhat affordable compared to some of the other towns on the North Shore uh, with the median uh, uh, salary. Um, does that bode well, I guess, in theory, for keeping residents in the community? Yes. I mean, we are a livable community, and you can afford to come here, but it does cost more yeah. to live in Evanston than in some communities to the west. So mm -hmm. it depends on whether you want more house for your money or whether you think right. that living in a diverse community is worth giving up some extra bedrooms or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was interesting because I know they were talking about Cook County, and, and I'm assuming mostly the North Shore too. And I was thinking that you know, that's interesting that you have higher, you may have higher prices for housing up there. But if those folks aren't bringing in the salaries anymore that are you know substantiating that type of housing, are they going to drift further south towards us and into the city? And you know, again, it's it's all crystal balling at this point. But it's interesting just because it's so different from what we're used to. Well, certainly this economy has created a whole lot of changes. Yes. Yes. And one of them. Some of them may be good. Yeah. I'm assuming you didn't think it would be to this level when you actually took the position. Uh, I had <laughs> no idea. <laughs> that, but at least I knew I didn't know what I was getting into. So, uh, good. I, I had no idea the economy was going to collapse this badly. Yeah. Any words of wisdom from, uh, I, I don't know if I'm safe in calling her your mentor, uh, Lorraine Morton? Uh, anything with Lorraine? We saw her in the Google video. Uh, Lorraine was in the Google video. and. Uh, the city is smart enough to know to call Lorraine when, uh, whenever we need something. <laughs> and we didn't call her for her technology, you know, expertise <laughs> for the Google video, but we figured, you know, there isn't anyone Lorraine can't talk into whatever it is she wants to talk <laughs> them into. So uh, we thought if we ended the video with Lorraine, that would convince Google. It was only appropriate, yes. Okay. So the great. city is still functioning with two mayors. <laughs> and she that's the best of both worlds and she comes through she said yeah. I think this Google is a great idea Liz good <laughs> thank good. you yeah I, I, I was gonna say now there was a little bit of feedback I guess that was opposed you're always gonna have that were you surprised at all that there were some folks who thought that bringing Google in was a waste of time or we shouldn't do it or there's you know this is Evanston yeah of course <laughs> I, the, the wonderful thing is everybody has their viewpoint and everyone expresses it yeah yeah that's one of the things I love about this town
Well, I'm happy we have a chance to have you come in and express some opinions, give us some lowdown on what's happening over at uh, 2100 Ridge, and uh, hopefully it will be a good summer for everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mayor Tisdow, and thank you for watching. This is another edition of Meet the Mayor. I'm Steve Bartabal. Have a good night.